What was different in 2019 was not just we globalized, what we did the expansion part by going into each country, collaborating with the national federation, collaborating with the local federation. You'll see a lot of co-promotions, uh, a lot of scouting for local talents. And at the same time, we built an infrastructure in every country that we went to that is beyond just the event. And 2019, it was great to see the expansion of Brave. You will see uh, the expansion in the commercial side as well, where we opened up the energy drink, which is a manufacturing factory opened in the United States of America. We have our nutrition, which is a Brave nutrition that have started in the UK. You see our first ever Brave Gym going to be open in Pakistan. This shows a globalization factor, but what we did in 2019 is evident there that we have not just gone there, but we have expanded that uh, territory and made it a solid industry for mixed martial arts that every community within the mixed martial arts industry is able to grow financially and grow the sport itself. The mixed martial arts industry today leans towards flowing to where the wind blows. However, when a resolute vision, a befitting cause in the name of change appears before you, all the structure is shaken to its core. That same structure that only benefits a chosen few, that disables MMA from achieving its true potential as the fastest growing sport in the world, is the true target for Brave Combat Federation. The Bahraini organization has never bothered to compare itself to other MMA promotions. Their race is against that structure, not against other competitors. Born out of the vision of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Al Khalifa, Brave CF was introduced in the MMA world to change it completely. Inside out. Thank God to His Highness that uh, all these athletes that's out there were able to support 300, 400 athletes today in three years' time. And uh, thank God he loved mixed martial arts and uh, he, didn't, he was not as passionate about chess like mixed martial arts. We would have missed him a lot, you know. So uh, as a mixed martial arts fan, I always, uh, I always sit down and think about it and I'm like, if he wasn't in love with mixed martial arts, we would have missed a lot of things, you know, so, and uh, that passion and love he had for mixed martial arts is a blessing for us, it's a blessing for all the athletes, and uh, in five years' time, like I always say, that uh, we're going to see that it's a blessing for the industry of mixed martial arts in the whole world. The goal is, and always has been, to offer fighters a global platform to showcase their talents, regardless of their marketability. To elevate mixed martial arts from the events business to a sports business, to provide the sport with a unified set of regulations overseen by a unique worldwide body. Through the vision of His Highness Sheikh Khalid, KHK MMA was born. The first step of this great vision was to establish a platform for the athletes and the passionate uh, combat sport athletes in Bahrain to come forward, participate in the sport of mixed martial art, experience the sport, train with the best athletes around the globe and compete and compete to test their highest potential. I was really very impressed with the competition that we witnessed yesterday. Uh, the level of organization was very high. Congratulations to Shahid and his team. And uh, we're looking forward to seeing more MMA development in uh, Bahrain. A team that would offer athletes in different stages of their career everything they needed to succeed. A small experiment of what was to come. Ready to war. Woo! When positive results started to unravel, led by the likes of Frankie Edgar, Khabib Nurmagomedov, and Jose Torres, it was time to take the experiment global. We have uh, two coaches here from Dagestan. This guy is my teammates, my brothers, Eldar Eldaro, wrestling coach, Sambo coach, and uh, Renat Abu Ahmad, uh, Muay Thai coach. Eldar is world champion, world combat Sambo, 
Renat is world champion Muay Thai and uh, these guys uh, have very big experience and I think these guys working uh, very hard uh, with this team and uh, when I come these guys training me too and uh, I'm very happy about uh, when I come to Bahrain I'm like home because, because uh, uh, my friends training me here uh, but in home I'm training with my father but when I come here I training with uh, Bahrain guys and with my teammates. This is very comfortable for me. Brave Combat Federation was officially born on September 23, 2016, with Brave CF1 beginning. Yeah, an event like this is just booming in Bahrain. It's really interesting to break the routine and come here. And Sheikh Khal did an amazing job in bringing this here. Wow, what an amazing night. You should be here, you're missing out. Brilliant, awesome. The entertainment is good, the kingdom is beautiful. I love it. Since then, more than 400 athletes from over 70 nations have been exposed to the vision and the cause, and have left their marks in the fastest growing organization in the world of mixed martial arts. In turn, Brave Combat Federation has visited 20 countries in four years of operations, empowering those nations by agreements with national federations, local gyms, and has put in place the biggest scouting program in MMA, designed to find talents no matter where they are and no matter what their marketing power is. Hello, Brave Nation. This is Kirik Janess. I am an OG of mixed martial arts. I wrote the first book on the sport in 1998. A Couple years prior to that, I grabbed the URL mixedmartialarts.com. The sport wasn't even called mixed martial arts at the time. I wanted to get nhb.com, but I was beaten by Disney by about three weeks. And I passed on mma.com because it cost 200 bucks and that seemed like a lot of money at the time. In addition to running MixedMartialArts.com, I serve as the sport's official records keeper, records and suspension keeper, as mandated by the spirit of U.S. federal law, the Muhammad Ali Act. I run a modest gym in my hometown of Amherst, Massachusetts. And above all, what I'm most proud of is I am a commentator for Brave Combat Federation. Mixed Martial Arts really took hold of me in a tiny little country, the Kingdom of Lesotho in Southern Africa. I walked to, there was two movie theaters in town, and it, it wasn't like you have a movie in mind that you want to go see, and you find what theater has it. You go to the theater, whatever they're playing, that's what you're watching. What was it? Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. And since that day, little 13-year-old me, sitting there in a movie theater watching Bruce Lee, I've never wanted to do anything else. I opened up a uh, martial arts gym professionally when I got out of university and 10 years into that we all gathered around a television at a friend's condo and we watched UFC 1. And that to me was the application of the scientific method to martial arts. Prior to this martial arts had been a, it had, it, 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 it had been a thing where everybody thought they were better than average because there was no way to prove it. And with the application of what I believe is the scientific method to mix martial arts, you get a system to find out what actually really works. In November of 2017, I was invited to attend an event and it's been life changing for me. And uh, in just a few words, it's given me a reason to believe again. Every single mixed martial arts promotion on the face of the planet Earth, with the exception of one, is in the butts in seats business. The business they're in is trying to put butts in seats. Butts in seats in front of a pay-per-view. Butts in seats in front of a television broadcast. Butts in seats in front of, a, an, audio, in front of an arena for, for the live audience experience. That's the business they're in. Brave Combat Federation is in a different business. 
It's born from a, a literally noble, noble in terms of quality and also Sheikh Khalid is nobility. It's born from a noble vision. The vision has multiple bases, but they include bringing the sport up everywhere. It includes bringing the amateur side, finally recognizing the amateur side, supporting the amateur side, because of course now with no amateurs, there's no pros. That's how sports work. And it's also involved in moving the sport away from the butts and seats entertainment business and into the sports business. In time, when we look back 10 years from now, five years from now, 20 years from now, what we're gonna see is that it was everything. First of all, I'd like to thank His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa and Mr. Ruslan for making Brave 32 and Bref 16 Global happen here in Kyrgyzstan. So thank you very much. I'd, I'd also like to say that this is the first step for making Kyrgyzstan, to taking Kyrgyzstan's enemy and Kyrgyzstan's fighters to a global stage. And on behalf of His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamid Khalifa, I'd like to thank the beautiful country of Kyrgyzstan and Mr. Dastan for all the support that you have given us. And inshallah, together we will take Kyrgyzstan and me and Kyrgyzstan fighters to a much more bigger level and a global stage. Thank you very much. The year of 2020 was aptly named by Brave CF President Mohammed Shaheed as the year of change. Our phase one was always to be uh, a part of the other promotions and the industry and to make sure that everybody understands what Brave Combat Federation is. And we've accomplished that going around the world. And uh, in 2020, the most important uh, step was as a priority was to create that change and to introduce that change to the mixed martial industry and uh, that was the goal and that is why we had to call it the year of change and it is not the year that's going to be actually creating the change it was an year that's actually going to be planting the seed for the future change brave combat federation is so different from other promotions than any other promotion that i've ever seen because it's truly a family it's fighters for fighters if you go down the the list from everyone in our company uh, they are former fighters, they do train, they are martial artists. So we understand the struggles and the sacrifices of what these fighters have to go through in order to be here. What they have to go through to succeed. So we will take care of our fighters like no other organization in the world. We brand our fighters like no other organization in the world. You can't open the internet without seeing Brave Combat Federation all over the internet. And that's one thing that we have as a business model that's so different than any other organization that if you fight for Brave Combat Federation, we're going to give you that platform to elevate your career and give you the support and recognition and global exposure that you deserve. So many promotions are only about the main event, only about the co-main event, where we have so many fighters from so many uh, countries in this world. And just because you haven't heard of them yet, doesn't mean that they're not one of the greatest fighters and greatest talent in MMA in the world. I truly believe that we have the best fighters in the world. We have the hungriest fighters in the world. And we have a team here, like I said, a family that does it all, all in the honor of Brave Combat Federation and His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, who's our vision and support and has made this all happen with the Hawk Muhammad Shaheed, our brave president. During the year, new territories were scheduled to be discovered. Old homes were to be revisited, but all plans were thrown into turmoil in a chaotic space. The only constant remaining was the hard work of His Highness Sheikh Khalid and Muhammad Shaheed, who remained resolute despite all the challenges that lay ahead. The year 2020 began with a blast in partnership with WFC. The plan is to go to the arena, hang out for a few hours, 
get a W and head home back to Jersey. If we need the doctor inside, for sure, nobody is coming inside. Another thing, we rep speaks to you. Hey, fight back, action, please. Okay, you always listen to me, but never speak to me and never look at me. We are here in beautiful Ljubljana, Slovenia, with Brave combines with the WFC for the most explosive fight card in European mixed martial arts history. Come join me on this incredible night. Again, this partnership is going to make history. We have nine incredible fights, including the WFC heavyweight title fight for our main event. Don't blink, ladies and gentlemen. Watch it on Brave TV. Brave Nation, are you ready? It was the old normal in full swing. A sold out crowd on a night out, cheering some of the best young fighters in the world live. Enjoying the action without a care in the world. Brave CF 34 witnessed the surge of two young and hungry contenders with Mohamed Mikhaev and Benoit St. Denis earning dominant wins and making their names known within the Brave CF roster. Working with Brave to bring huge international show to Slovenia was incredible. The event was a huge success and this means that, that uh, not only the athlete but also the fans got witnessed the night they will never forget. Uh, so I can guarantee you that was just a warm-up for what is coming next year. Uh, it was my pleasure to work with uh, such a professional team and, uh, and I'm looking forward for next co-promotion. Soon, it would be impossible to replicate the amazing atmosphere on that January night. While Brave CF witnessed an amazing night of fights with its partner WFC in Slovenia, a mysterious virus slowly started to spread throughout the world, and it would soon put the entire world on pause. The next four months were scheduled to be some of the greatest in the company's history, with a return to its beloved second home in Brazil, and a legendary clash between Hamzat Shimeyev and champion Jara El Salawi, announced for Brave CF's debut in Sweden. Brave CF made grand plans for the first quarter of 2020, but little did the organization know, all of the planning would go into disarray very soon. Now, there are fears that the coronavirus outbreak could become a pandemic. We now know there are confirmed cases in 35 countries. It's already classed as an epidemic, but here's an update from the BBC's medical correspondent, Fergus Walsh, saying the combined situation in South Korea, Iran and Italy point to the early stages of a pandemic, a pandemic being when a disease has spread worldwide. Coronavirus, or COVID-19, is a virus that causes respiratory tract infections in human beings, which sometimes can be fatal. When the COVID-19 surge was finally classified as a pandemic, sports organizations left and right stopped dead in their tracks. World Health Organization has now confirmed what many epidemiologists have been saying for weeks. The coronavirus is a pandemic. We all know that most of the sporting events have been either postponed or canceled at this point. So how important was it for the various leagues to make these decisions? And now with the NBA suspending play, it just lets you know there's no blueprint. We don't understand how to handle this situation. And the best thing to do at this point in time is halt everything, try and limit uh, big gatherings and, and continue to get information from the medical services. My name is Valeria Lang, Chief Operations Officer of Brave Combat Federation and KHK Sports. I work very closely with uh, Mohammed Shahid. My responsibility is to ensure everything runs smoothly at any given situation. Since the inception, we have traveled to more than 20 countries in four years, but none of it was as challenging as 2020. 
One of the biggest challenges with COVID-19 in 2020 was to understand what the global situation is. And it was not a decision that Brave Combat Federation as a company or as a brand could make. It was a decision that we had to closely evaluate, uh, study and analyze what's happening at a, uh, a global level. We had to discuss and uh, have conversations with all the government bodies in different countries, embassies, um, government officials, medical team. And we had to come up with something that we had to make sure that it is uh, focused on safety. And that was the only priority we had was whatever we do, whether it's events or we don't do events, whatever leads to keeping our fighters, our athletes, our staff safe, that was the most important thing. And we had to follow every procedure and every policy that was uh, advised by the uh, global organizations for health towards how to keep people safe. And that was the uh, focus of Brave Combat Federation. So this was the biggest challenge of not really knowing. The unknown factor was, I think, the biggest challenge we had while dealing with COVID-19 in 2020. Everyone needed to take a step back and understand what this was all about and how to safely continue their routines, not only to avoid infection, but for the sake of others, with no option to guarantee the safety of athletes and staff. Brave Combat Federation was forced to postpone its three previously scheduled events. The show needed to go on, but it needed to be safe too. First concern uh, really was the unknown factor about the virus itself. We had to pay very close attention uh, to the global development regarding uh, COVID-19 uh, in the different types and the different types of measures taken to control the pandemic. Studying the policies of different countries and WHO was, I think, one of the advantages as well that helped us to pull off the event's safety. The decision to resume the shows took place in June, with July 20th as the targeted date and Romania as the home for the comeback. Then, the real work began. In order to put on a safe international event in the middle of a pandemic, several issues had to be taken into account. The COVID-19 protocol had to be perfect, and the solution to finding the flawless plan came from several deep discussions that took place between Brave CF, the partners at RXF, and health bodies both local and international. That's a big thing. So that's why now I'm to important to hold the best uh, system to control uh, COVID-19 and we are all stable and things are moving. That is done. The only concern is quarantine, you know. So if you go to a country, so I, I, I was asking Jason as well, how is things there, you know? It's, do you have quarantine there? Strategic meeting. Maybe next week or the week after, we have to be put up a strategy what we want. So we can be clearly presenting them what we are looking for in the country. No walking in the premises, very important to mention that. No walking in the premises without the mask. I don't know if you mentioned that before, just policy, but make sure that they, they will not be allowed to enter the premises with the mask and gloves. But let's fight this policy, you know, fight this, to do that. I want to make sure that every partners and people that's working with us are informed that uh, of, of proper strategies and stuff. So I thought I'd give you a call and arrange a, a, a presentation call as well later where you can even have uh, anybody that you like to be present in the meeting just to give you, just because we are working together and you might work in the future and if there's also opportunity that we haven't discussed about also, maybe you see on the way and you realize you, we can work we can do that play, we can always bring together, but it's important that uh, once you know the complete plan, you know, you, you, you know there's nothing missing uh, from uh, our side, so it'll be much more clear. So. So to identify the right partners, our first step was to go and work with the co-promoter and with the country that we've already had experience with. And we've had great relationship with the RXF and with Romania. So uh, if you want to move into Europe, then we go into Romania. And that was uh, a no-brainer for us that that is the ideal place to start with. Of course, that was a first step. But of course, we had to go inside and identify what the challenges of the country is, how we're going to deal with it. And uh, with all the support we've got from our co-promoters, with our host nation, and with the government bodies, we worked together and made that event happen. So Romania was a great choice for us. We've held uh, two events in Romania back to back, which was amazing. We were able to give opportunity to the European athletes. I mean. For us to go out there and host our first event and bring uh, top European talents and uh, uh, give them the opportunity to compete again and uh, make a living for themselves, I mean, that was a start for us. We didn't know how far it would go. We didn't know if we could continue that, but we were happy that we started somewhere and we started with somewhere we are uh, aware of, somewhere we know and some partners we are uh, comfortable with. And that was uh, the only choice we had was Romania to start with and it worked out well for us. 
The goal was to maintain the safety of athletes and staff with repeated testing, isolation, and minimizing the number of staff present at the event. Since Brave CF has a stacked roster, with athletes from around the globe, finding flights from all corners of the world to Romania was also tremendously difficult. The ever-changing restrictions presented a different problem, but one that Brave CF had prepared for. Travel restrictions and visa complication uh, was a big challenge for us, which in turn led to uh, fight cancelling and turning into a lot of short notice fights. It was uh, so hard to predict and plan ahead. We had to have a dedicated team set up only to keep update on the government policies and changes, um, to keep constant communication with embassies and government officials to make sure we control any surprises during the uh, preparations. It was then that the hard work behind the scenes done by Brave CF throughout the years paid off. The most comprehensive scouting program in MMA has been put in place to identify fighters from across the globe only for their talents, not taking into account their marketing power or any other extra fighting qualities they might possess. For Brave Combat Federation, if you're good enough at fighting, you're deserving of a global platform to showcase your talents. The program made sure all corners of the world were covered, with 70 plus nations represented at Brave CF a testament to the work being done. It is that program that has given the likes of Hamzat Shimaev, Luana Pinheiro, Ilya Tupuria, Johnny Walker, and many others to the world of MMA. By providing these athletes with their first taste of international action, Brave CF used its program to identify athletes from countries that were still able to fly to Romania. Brave CF 35 and 36 gave fans several everlasting moments, such as the ferocious knockout victories of Mihai Laurentiu and Kevin Ruart. The winning return of top prospect Mohamed Mahayev and many others. During the first week of shows, all went as smooth as possible with the reduced staff working overtime to make sure everything was done in the best way possible. However, right before Brave CF 36, a threat to the continuation of the show made officials develop a safety plan. But that would mean a new venue to be found, sterilized and made use in little over two days. The threat was confirmed. A local staff member contracted the virus and was isolated together with everyone he had been in contact with. Even though there was no risk of spread, everything changed due to that one positive case. The Brave CF 35 venue was no longer an option. With two days to go, officials scrambled and were able to get a new venue, which was up to the specifications expected to safely conduct the show. 2020 hit everybody hard and uh, it was just like you had to restart all your strategies, all your planning had to be restarted. Time was the most important thing. Everything was short, short notice. It was almost impossible to give everybody uh, the updates on what's going to happen. We, we could have events uh, uh, planned six months or an year before, get the fight cards done three to four months before, and uh, deal with any pullouts uh, a month or two before. This time it was different. This time, uh, the fighters were concerned if they're ever going to get to fight, uh, including the company and staffs. You, you, you've seen so many companies laying off people. You see changes in companies, a lot of companies uh, falling down and not doing events, losing their television rights. Uh, it was something that uh, you didn't know what to give priority to. Is it to conduct event or is it to save and hold your uh, finances and look at the economic side of it? Or was it to make sure that your fighters get the opportunity to compete? Uh, I would always say that uh, what was in our mind and uh, His Highness's uh, target was to take a little bit of everything. With the return deemed a success, Brave CF moved on to Sweden, where the circumstances were different, but challenges still remained aplenty. From my point of view, to put on a show in the middle of a pandemic was like, of course, the issues with COVID need to be settled, but uh, Brave had a protocol, so so we followed that. 
and uh, made it very easy for us to do it because we don't have so much sanctions in Sweden, if you say like that. A more relaxed approach to combating COVID-19 in Sweden allowed Brave CF to bring in even more international fighters. Hey guys, flight was okay, flight was yeah. good. Uh, I'm here from Toronto. We're gonna be fighting Bernardo Sopai, and I'm looking forward to it. It's gonna be an action-packed fight. The travel was very good, uh, nice and calm. And now we are in Sweden. I see not much people at the airport. I think it's normal because of the virus and so, so everything is fine. But the series of events in the country was also about empowering the European MMA scene. In a moment when no other organization was putting on shows in the continent, Brave Combat Federation stepped up to the plate and gave plenty of opportunities to local fighters to showcase their skills on a global stage. One more fight, uh, one more opponent, and uh, I'm very happy we are, we are able to fight despite uh, COVID-19 and I'm ready for a war, you know. In turn, they delivered four breathtaking shows and set the continent alight with incredible performances that put the entire world on notice of the power of European MMA fighters. One of them in particular stood out. Muhammad Mokayev has been recognized as the hottest prospect in mixed martial arts. His work in the amateur scene is unparalleled as he won two straight World Junior Championships under the IMAF banner and chose to go pro after acquiring the number one spot in the pound-for-pound -pound amateur rankings. He had long been admired by Brave CF, who has also set up a grassroots program, utilizing its ties with IMAF to get a good first look at the biggest prospects coming through the amateur system. Mohamed Mokayev's dominance over his opposition as an amateur earned him a contract with Brave CF as soon as he decided to step into the professional ranks. His debut with Brave Combat Federation took place at Brave CF 37, and it was surrounded by intense scrutiny from media and fans, aware of his pedigree as an amateur. I feel excited, many fans uh, waiting for this moment, like for 1st of August, for my professional debut. Every time I fight like amateur, they say, hey, stop fighting amateur, it's illegal. Several athletes declined the opportunity to face off against the Punisher until Glenn McVeigh stepped up. It's very cheeky. I've been after him for three years. He knows I've been after him for three years, and now it's coming. And now he can't do anything. He needed an opponent, so he had he had to take it now. He couldn't couldn't talk it any longer. The young Irishman, who had a prestigious amateur career of his own, sent a scathing message on social media calling out Mokaev, using expletives and showing a true belief that he could take on the fast-rising prospect and win on short notice. The challenge was accepted, and the duo met in what was described as the biggest dual debut fight in professional mixed martial arts. Uh, when you saw two amateurs doing their pro debut, we saw the biggest promotion uh, of 2020 that we've never seen for any pro debut fight and that we've seen two amateurs go into their professional careers first debut fight and that was the biggest marketing for Brave Combat Federation 2020 and I've never seen any other debut fight of two athletes actually as big as Mokayev and Glenn's fight. In the end however, Mokayev's wrestling skills were too much for McVeigh and Mohammed dominated from bell to bell, earning a unanimous decision and his first professional win. Throughout the European invasion, other athletes were also discovered from the regional scenes and left their mark at Brave CF. Light heavyweights Anton Turkal and Zvonimir Kral helped breathe new life into the division as both men earned two victories in a short period of time during the European invasion. Kral's two wins took place in a space of 10 days, a feat even more impressive made by the fact that one of the victories was at heavyweight. When Brave came to, to Sweden and uh, bring the show there for four weeks, they're supposed to be there three, but they bring uh, four events. It was really good for, for uh, uh, Swedish fighters, for, for Scandinavian fighters. And uh, 
it helps me a lot to because of it I'm here now. The only thing that was an issue was for non-EU members to, to enter to Sweden. Otherwise everything is open in Sweden. So so that was the only issue we had uh, actually. So sometimes to put on a great, great fight card is a little bit difficult in these times. Lee Gleesman, a social worker for underprivileged kids by day and a jiu-jitsu black belt and MMA fighter by night, also stood out from the pack in his international debut. The Danish fighter had the opportunity to headline one of the European invasion shows and earn the biggest win of his career by submitting fellow grappler Henry Lintula. From August 1st to August 24th, four events changed the landscape of mixed martial arts forever in Europe. It was proven that an organization could indeed put in place the necessary arrangements to safely and successfully run a mixed martial arts event despite the pandemic and the continent. After Brave CF, many other organizations took on the challenge of returning to hosting shows on European soil. For Brave CF, it was about empowering the MMA scene in Europe to showcase the hidden gems, to give them a platform to rise above, and to connect local federations and organizations to a wider audience. I think it's always difficult to uh, do events around the world and especially in the country for the first time. This is what makes our operations team special and Brave Safe makes history and do what no MMA promotions in the world has done and being the only global MMA promotion. COVID policy that has to be implemented at every event Brave hosts. So we took that policy and implemented in Sweden and how smoothly that COVID policy was implemented in Sweden. The next thing we did was we said, you know what, we're not gonna stop at one event, we're going to move ahead and do three more events in Sweden and uh, we started with two more events and uh, everything was going so smooth and the fighters were getting the opportunity and things were looking so good and the, the support that the uh, co-promoters have given us was amazing and uh, we've, uh, we decided to do four events uh, in four weeks in Sweden and uh, we are still looking at 2021 to go back to Sweden and give them a bigger show there because uh, one of the best places I've traveled and been able to host an event uh, with a co-promoter was Sweden and we are looking forward to doing more of that. There's no hesitation at all to go and partner up with Brave, all professionals, everyone we was working with was awesome, Jason did Fantastic job, Dick. Everyone was great. The help from the office in Bahrain, everything was great. If you look at uh, uh, the Kingdom of Bahrain, how, how uh, the nation has dealt with uh, COVID-19, it has done one of the best jobs any country has done in the world. So we were confident that uh, if there was uh, anywhere we could hold events and bring international athletes, it had to be Bahrain, you know, and we knew that we were very confident that we could be able to pull off this event. Um, it definitely, yes. Uh, we were also happy that uh, our COVID policy at Brave Combat Federation has been something that we've implemented abroad and it has been a successful COVID-19 policy. Of course, that was also with the support of the Bahrain COVID-19 task force that supported us and advised us uh, to put together this COVID policy. As the organization pondered its next moves after a successful European invasion, the return to its home in the Kingdom of Bahrain seemed like a natural step. And who else but Mohammed Fahreddin to kick off the legendary Combat Kingdom, the first superstar of Brave CF, the biggest ever Arab MMA fighter, the legend. But it wasn't an easy road for the latest, who had to endure multiple hardships in 2020 alone. After COVID-19 hit, his training was limited, and then a fire burned down his home. While thankfully no one was hurt, it set Fahreddin back then. As the superstar was back on his feet, an unspeakable tragedy marked his life forever. Fahreddin lives 10 minutes away from the Beirut dock, where a big explosion killed hundreds of people and affected thousands. 2020 was obviously an incredibly difficult year for the Lebanese phenom, a staple of mixed martial arts in the region and a legend even before he punched his way to the middleweight world title. His crowning moment took place at the now-famous Combat Kingdom, 
a series of events that brought international sports and martial arts back to the Kingdom of Bahrain since the first time that the pandemic hit. Five shows took place in Bahrain as part of the Combat Kingdom, and the much-anticipated title fight between middleweight world champion Daniel Gaucho and Fahradin headlined the first show, Brave CF 41. Daniel, a fearsome fighter with a reputation to hurt his opponents on the way to victory, met his match on fight night. I felt so bad for the public that was able to come to the event and not being able to attend that due to the COVID uh, restrictions and they missed watching that event live, watching that fight live because everybody knows Mohamed Fakhardin. You know this guy, you know how tough he is, you know his mentality of uh, he, if there's anybody in the world has the strongest fighter's mind and heart, one name and that's Mohamed Fakhardin. But that was just a matchup made in heavens, you know. You had everything that is going on with Fakhruddin. He was ready to fight for the title. He was there and he was a contender. We already knew was supposed to be the contender and he was able to fly out of Lebanon and make that fight happen. It was amazing for us to make that fight happen and Daniel Gojo jumped on that opportunity and said that that's the opportunity he wants. We, we didn't know what to expect, you know. We really didn't know what to expect. And then you see a fight like what you saw. You're expecting a great fight, definitely, but when you see a fight where Daniel Gaucho is running over Mohamed Fakhruddin, putting everything he's got, and then you're just looking at Mohamed Fakhruddin and thinking of Fakhruddin's life and everything that he's going through, and what must be he going through at that point, and you see him get a cut on his forehead and he's sitting in his corner, and, and I, I just saw his face at that point, there's something different about him. He didn't look like that Mohamed Fakhruddin was thinking of his techniques or the strategy. He just looked like a guy who's just looking and saying, one is a one minute getting over, you know, I need to go back in. And then he comes in the second round and you see a different Fakhruddin. Wow, I just get goosebumps just thinking about it. I mean, nobody was expecting that. Everybody, the Fakhru fans were looking and all they could do was scream, Bo'ali, Bo'ali, Bo'ali. Everyone, where I was talking to guys, people calling me and they just yelling Bo'ali because they knew who he was. They saw what he's going through, giving everything that he had to finish Daniel Gaucho, a tough opponent that nobody wants to fight, a champion of Brave Combat Federation, the only word you have is wow. As aggressive as a champion, but with more technique, Fahreddin weathered the early storm to make history. He knocked out Gaucho in the fourth round and brought the championship back to the Middle East. It was a deserving moment for a figure that pushed the sport to new heights in the area, even before Brave CF came along to put the Middle East definitively on the map of mixed martial arts worldwide. A week later, Brave CF 42 took place with the beginning of the biggest flyweight tournament in the history of the sport. In the same event, a veteran of the sport and stalwart of Filipino MMA would have the chance to return to winning ways after almost a year away from the sport. Because they gave me like two weeks notice, so I just studied the weakness of my opponent and how I will beat him using his weakness and hoping that I will get the finish in the, in the fight day. Called up as a last minute replacement, Rolando D. Incredible D had just witnessed the birth of his baby daughter, Joy Gabrielle, when he was called up to face Maciej Gershevsky, a powerful striker who once fought as a light heavyweight before dropping all the way down to lightweight. The prospect of facing a bigger man was never an issue with D. The lack of training might have been. But he wasn't in a position to say no. A new father, who hadn't fought since December, was dependent on gym fees that were scarce due to COVID-19. I promised to my daughter, to my wife, and to my, to my family, and to my country that I will finish you, and I will finish you. Rolando actually jumped at the opportunity to do what he does best, outsmart and outstrike the opposition. And that's exactly what he did. 
implementing a very smart game plan. He stifled Maché's offense throughout three rounds to earn his first victory as a lightweight. Back in the Philippines, we're just an average human beings. And I really need this fight because after the pandemic, I was praying for a fight during the pandemic that, that is almost impossible. And thank you, brave nation, for giving me the opportunity for answering my prayers. God used you to be a blessing in my family. I really need this win. I badly need this win. I pray to God that please give me a fight. Late notice, even late notice, even one week notice, two weeks notice, as long as you will, you will give me a fight because I just had a baby, my first word, and I really want to give her the good future. And this fight is for the Lord and for my baby, Joy Gabriel Rebagoda D. I was thinking of her during the fight. Before the fight, I was thinking of her for her future. And this fight is the start. It's the start of my continuous win in the lightweight division. I will never go, go back to featherweight. I will continue my reign in the lightweight division. And for this fight, I never sparred a bit. I never sparred a bit. I just did some drilling and, and some mitts and running conditioning. I never sparred for this fight. That's why my, my, I, my precision is not that good I, I i missed a lot but i promise i will do better in the next fights a little over a month later at brave cf 44 rolando would return once again on short notice to take on rising young star john bruin a proud kiwi bruin was delighted to be training normally for this fight since New Zealand has dealt with COVID-19 in innovative ways and has had very few cases for months. However, to accept this fight, he would have to leave the safety of his country and embark on a journey to the unknown. For his second fight in less than a month, D was focused on making a run at the title. The strategy was the same to use his years of experience at the highest level to outsmart his younger opponent. Having fought three rounds a little over a month ago and worried about fatigue, Rolando had a very different game plan this time around, and once again, it paid off. He threw off John Bruin, who was ready for a do-or-die attitude from the Filipino. Instead, Rolando looked to score with strikes whenever he saw an opening and led the way to his second lightweight victory. And a call out to world champion Amin Ayub, another king crowned during Combat Kingdom. Combat Kingdom was one of the best events um, we have done this year and it was absolutely amazing work from the production and content teams pulling over beauty of a show. Also, a um, great job and great support from the National Bahrain Federation. Our uh, operations manager, Faith Pearson, and everyone in short did an amazing job. Aside from Fahreddin and Ayub, Combat Kingdom was the site of many opportunities for young Middle Eastern fighters taking their first steps towards a career in MMA. Brave Combat Federation made it a point to use its home events to promote amateur bouts with the intent of giving local young athletes more competition experience in a professional environment. It was also about giving amateur superstars their first taste of professional action. Step forward, Murtaza Talha. His punches are like hammer, believe me. I mean, that's one of those uh, guys you don't want to get punched by, you know. He goes out there, he out wrestles guys heavier than him. He goes out there, cuts no weight, punches guys and knocks people out with one punch. So there's nothing that you see that this kid cannot do. Widely recognized as the best amateur lightweight in the world 
and leaving his amateur career with two world titles and the number six spot in the pound for pound rankings. Murtaza made his debut at Brave CF 45, the final Combat Kingdom event. His unique fighting style, which blends top class wrestling with an ever improving striking game, has made him the talk of the MMA world. A dominant victory over a tough, Badim Litvin followed. Bringing fighters from all over the world to the Combat Kingdom presented a unique challenge as well. In total, 32 nations were represented across five events, with 71 athletes descending upon Bahrain for competition. It meant a perfect plan would have to be put in place to keep fighters safe and able to train and cut weight at the same time. The result of the policy was a very big success and we were able to make events keeping all the fighters and coaches, staff and everyone safe and make a living for them in these unfortunate times. With all the safety measures successfully implemented, Combat Kingdom was a rousing success. Every athlete that has a dream and hope to become the biggest stars of mixed martial arts should have a platform to achieve that. From gym to glory, how can a kid who asks his parents or his guardians or anybody that he trusts and tells them that my goal is I want to be a fighter, I want to be a Jarrah Salawi, I want to be Hamza Kohiji, I want to be a Murtaza Tal, I want to be a Gamzat Shimaev. If you're going to be talking about these names and you want to be that, how do we start him in a way where we know that if he works hard, if he puts all his effort into it, he can achieve that. And in 2020, we call it the year of change because this is the year we're not going to compromise and we want to make sure that we put the seed towards fighting and running towards that change. In 2021, we want to make sure that uh, it is a high time for us to speak the truth. It is high time to reveal the truth. It is high time for us to take that wheel out of our face and show the world, and not to the rest of the world, but to show to the MMA world that the future is this. This is the system of change. Change is not enough. In 2021, we want to make sure that we reveal the truth. Truth about every statement that is made previously, every statement that is made by promotions, statements that is made by promoters, statements that is made by managers and fighters, statements that is made by media industry that says things without actually backing it with uh, researchers, backing it with actual proof. And uh, that truth is going to be revealed in 2021 because when you do right, you can never go wrong. And that's, that's one thing we believe in. That's one thing the Brave Combat Federation has always put in front of them. Sure, you go on the road, you're always going to have bumps, you're never going to be perfect. But uh, in the end of the day, one thing, whether you fall, you break something, you know one thing for sure, in the end of the day, you're fighting for that cause, and the cause is the most important thing. And the cause we're fighting for is to change the mixed martial industry to a positive change. So 2021 is gonna be the year of truth, where a lot of things will be revealed, and uh, that's one of the years where we're gonna be going slightly out of Brave Combat Federation's direction of achieving the goal as it always does, and to go out there and educate the public, to go out there and speak to the public, go out there and speak to the MMA world, MMA media, and uh, speak to them about what we all have to unite and what we all have to fight towards. It's gonna to be an exciting year because a lot of things are gonna be black and white together with all the people that really cares for mixed martial art, who really loves mixed martial art, who has a passion for mixed martial art, are gonna come united to fight for the cause and the vision of His Highness Sheikh Khalid. And that vision is uh, a vision which we all have and we all look forward to, is to see mixed martial art as a sport, as an industry be one of the biggest in the world and we all want to be a part of it and I'm sure that every athlete, every manager, every MMA media industry and uh, every promoter in the world is looking forward to that and uh, it's not far away, it's close by, we have it in our hands. In 2021 we're going to reveal it out. What makes 2021 even more exciting is we are looking forward to the event that uh, we've been trying to make happen for the past two years. We've always knew some of the greatest talents in the world is coming out of Russia. We always knew that some of the best fights in the world are coming out of Russia. As a promoter, as a president of Brave Combat Federation, it was uh, a very disappointing year when, came, when, I, when I realized that we won't be able to pull off an event in Russia this year. We've, we were so close to doing an event in Russia. Of course, the pandemic affected 
and we had to cancel that uh, uh, plan of moving into Russia. So we made a decision that when it comes to 2021, let's start the year by going into Russia. Let's make sure that we take out all our disappointments and let's make it into a day of celebration for all our Russian fans, all our Russian athletes and uh, uh, the MMA community in Russia and for the brave nation to go enter the Russian market and do an event there. Uh, it's going to be January 16th in Sochi and uh, we're going to see all the biggest Russian talents going to be competing against the world, you know. So everyone, every fighter would dream of is to showcase how good they are when they're fighting in their home in front of their family and their friends and their fans. And uh, we're giving that opportunity to the, to the Russian athletes. One of the most uh, exciting fights that I'll be looking forward to is to finally, finally see Eldar Eldarov fight in the main event defending his title in Russia and uh, that's gonna be unbelievable and it's gonna be amazing and I, I, I can't imagine how the atmosphere is gonna look like when finally he's gonna be able to go back to Russia and uh, fight for the title and defend his title there. 2020 wasn't an easy year for us but we finished as strong as we always do. Now we look forward for 2021 and I'm sure it won't be easy you know, and we will face a hell lot of challenges, but I'm sure we are ready as always. We are brave. The organization will visit new territory in early 2021. Brave CF 46 takes place on January 16th in Sochi. Russia will become the 21st country to welcome a Brave Combat Federation event, an unparalleled feat for a four-year-old company. Another huge MMA hotbed will be covered by the fastest growing organization in the world. Another amazing show awaits the best fans on the planet. Thank you for an incredible 2020. See you soon in 2021.